it's a machine for making chocolate. But these are not sweets. They're an addictive amphetamine, a class A drug in the UK called Captagon. We've had rare access to an illegal factory in Lebanon's Bekar Valley on the border with Syria. Two countries that after war and economic collapse are turning into narco states. That's worth $3 million in Saudi Arabia, where thousands of addicts pay more than $10 a pill. It makes them feel euphoric, but ruins their health. The producer wants to remain anonymous, while senior figures in Lebanon and Syria are making billions from Captagon. He's just trying to survive. The factory is one of scores across the Bekar. Farmers here have long cultivated hashish, but Captagon, the poor man's cocaine, requires just a room, a machine, and legally imported ingredients. The area is controlled by the militant group Hezbollah, which is backed by Iran, allied to the regime in Syria, and part of the Lebanese government. At the moment, both Lebanon and Syria and all countries which are under Iranian occupation are technically narco states and we are being dealt with accordingly. This is unfortunately a reality which the Lebanese up until now haven't yet admitted and this is something which will prevent us from recovering from the ongoing economic collapse. Mohammed Jafar denies that he's involved in the drug trade himself, but as the head of a powerful Bekar clan, admits that his gunmen guard the border, and some drug lords may be connected to his family. Captain, في تجار معروف يعني عنه وبالأعلام معروف وعالميا كانوا جعفر أو زعيتر أو بعد العائلات. Crime has engulfed Lebanon, he says, and blame lies with senior politicians and judges. نحن بلبنان لا سياسي عادلة سياسي فاسدة. نظام مجرم قضاء مجرم ما في قضاء عنا كله قضاء فاسد ومجرم. The symbol of Lebanon's failure as a state is Beirut port, which blew up 18 months ago because politicians and officials allowed dangerous nitrates to be stored there for six years. The ruined grain store looms over the city, and drugs make up an ever larger proportion of exports. Just last month, a shipment of oranges was intercepted at the port. The fruit was plastic, and inside, nine million captagon pills, destined for the Gulf. Oranges are not the only fruit. After a consignment of pomegranates turned out to contain the drugs, last year, Saudi Arabia banned agricultural exports from Lebanon, a move that has only made farmers' lives harder. Captagon is manufactured not just in Lebanon, but increasingly in Syria, which also has strong links with Iran. It's smuggled by land to Saudi Arabia, Jordan and Turkey, and by sea, primarily to Qatar, Kuwait, the UAE and Libya, and in small quantities to Europe. Back in 2018, the Greek Coast Guard apprehended the Noka, a Syrian flagged ship laden with Captagon, headed for the Libyan city of Benghazi. It had originated in the port of Latakia, the heartland of President Bashar al-Assad. In 2020, legal exports from Syria were worth just one-fifth of the value of seized Syrian captagon. The Syrian president rarely appears in public now, but his cheerleaders keep up appearances. The army's fourth division, commanded by his brother Maher, controls the area around Latakia and according to several sources, the Captagon trade. Assad rules over a ruined state, a hollow victory after a decade of war. His only allies are Russia and Iran. 
drugs may not just be the regime's main income, while ordinary Syrians struggle to survive, but also a way for Assad to take revenge on Gulf countries, which supported the rebels who tried to oust him. This drug, particularly recently with the start of the Syrian civil war, has become a weapon and a tool that the Syrian regime as well as the Iranian regime uses against both Lebanon and the Gulf by making money from a very cheap uh, produced drug as well as the ability to, uh, to smuggle it into the Gulf which gives them a lot of money. And this is why the drug, the amphetamines and Coptagon in particular has become synonymous with Hezbollah as well as the Assad regime. In 2020, 84 million pills worth more than a billion dollars were uncovered in the port of Salerno. Knowing that jihadis often use the drug to keep themselves awake and fearless, the Italian authorities initially thought Islamic State was responsible, but later said the pills were shipped from Latakia with the aid of Hezbollah. So wake up and smell the coffee. It might not be what you think. Lebanon's information division within the internal security forces has the daunting task of trying to stop the trade. كانت شحنة معدة 4 ملايين حبة بكيس من البان كانت معدة تروح بعبر من من لبنان على الأردن للأردن كانت بدها تفوت على السعودية. But it's hard for one part of the Lebanese state to combat a crime that's benefiting another and the political elite next door in Syria. عم برجع اقول انه الكابتاجون تهريب الكابتاجون وتهريب الكابتاجون كانت ما كانت موجوده قبل الازمه بالسورية بلبنان يعني هذا الموضوع اجت بعد الازمه وجرى لو شاف التجار والمصنعين انه هيدي مربحه وبتصير بصوره دائمه بينما تجاره الحشيش او زياره الحشيش موسم واحد The factories in the Bekaa are mobile to avoid the colonel's forces but the drug kingpins are protected by a faction within the Lebanese government. The people who are providing cover are the Hezbollah uh, slash Iranian militias, which make a lot of money and provide security and protection for these uh, drug smuggling operations. On the streets of Beirut, the cash points have been vandalized. People can't withdraw their savings. The currency is worthless now anyway and 80% of the population lives in poverty. The dividing line between a state and a criminal enterprise has become blurred. The captagon trade is the product of war and corruption. Its consequences spreading from Beirut's ruined port across the Middle East.